Hello, and welcome to Aerospace Rocketry. Uh, another video of another project I just finished. Uh, we're going to give you an overview from the bottom up. Uh, please don't mind the decals are not on backwards. It's just that my camera is reversed, so all the letters look like they're backwards. So for anybody who makes a comment that I put my decals on wrong, you're wrong. Run that introduction, and we'll right, be right with you. Okay, thank you for joining me again. I have uh, close to a thousand subscribers and I hope to get there after this video. So please like and, and uh, subscribe for me. I really appreciate it. So today we're gonna to talk about a Sidewinder, another one. Don't know if you can see this one up here, but I built that way back in the 1990s for my level two. A lot of you have heard that before, that story before. Um, that is a four inch version, and I pretty much took the SD's Sidewinder that my son got for Christmas that year and just multiplied the dimensions and did the best I could to make the best looking Sidewinder I could possibly do. That thing has flown numerous times, I lost count, it has a lot of battle scars. So I decided to put together a full scale, actually slightly full scale, 1 to 1.1, roughly 10% bigger than full uh, scale. Um, lock precision pretty much has this entire rocket and tubes and motor tubes and everything and they're they're one of their basic sizes is 5.5 inches or 5.35 diameter so i use that and of course upscale the 10 percent across the board so this is my new sidewinder i'm going to start from the bottom here and we're going to work our way up i'm going to tell you what we have and i have some notes here because i'm getting old so i want to make sure i don't miss anything as we go through the process so starting on the back end here um we use a 75 millimeter motor mount in the in the rocket itself this will probably fly on an l 11 something 1125 or so i got uh, a couple of choices that we can put this thing up on but i'm using an aero pack motor retainer these things work great uh, i'm going to put links for everything that i've used in here to the manufacturers so you guys have it but um it's very strong and this is the greatest thing is to hold your motors in place because as most of you know you get the 75 98 millimeter you certainly don't want to lose your motors so again what we have is 5.5 inch low tubes all glassed um and as we go through this i'm going to flash pictures to you as you can so you can see the construction of each one and I'll pause as we get there. Um, so starting with the rear fins, these are quarter inch birch plywood. Very strong, I've used these before. Of course, through the wall, tons of epoxy. I use West Systems epoxy, very strong. And I wanted to make this one as realistic as possible. In fact, I got some comments that it looks so real that people thought I actually had a, a heat sinking nose cone on it, which is a compliment. But Sidewinders have roller-ons. These things are dis uh, designed to spin at a very high speed on a real one to help keep it stable and steer it. Um, I used Boyce Aerospace. He's been a buddy of mine, Alex, for a long time. Uh, I've ordered a lot of stuff from him. He's helped me with the Falcon 9 nose cone, 3D printing. He's my 3D printer guy. So he printed me roller-ons, and then I designed these pieces here to look like metal with screws, but this is all wood, painted wood, uh, 3D printed roller-ons, and they actually work. I'll get you some close-up shots of that. So we have those across the bar, and of course so we have our heavy-duty fillets to keep this strong. Again, this is a fiberglass tube. Um, our next section here is also a lock tube fiberglass. And uh, this is permanently mounted on here. I do have a steel cable as an extra support mechanism. It goes all the way up to the bulkhead. So that will never separate. Very strong um, attachment for all the chutes. We'll work our way up here. And in here we have the low 
5.35 uh, electronic bay. Um, really nice. I mean, it comes with everything you need. All the hardware, the all threads come with it. it. It just goes together really, really nice. And there's two switches here because inside here we have an RRC3 altimeter. And we have a backup RRC2 altimeter. Um, I always have backups, especially on these big projects. We don't want any problems. Um, come up the line a little bit here. I do have a camera that will be on board during flight. And by the way, I hope to have this fly at LDRS up in New York on Sunday. That's the planned flight. Because on Saturday, I'm going to try to put up my other latest project, which is um, Elon Musk's Starship. My first two-stage high power, and I hope to have that up too. Uh, so I'm using here for a camera, uh, Mobius Mini. Okay. Now the Mobius cameras, I've been using the new 4K one, MK4, I think it's called, and they are outstanding. Literally, I use that on my Falcon 9. I had, uh, I think we had two cameras going on the Falcon 9. And from the time we got to the pad, before we even stood the rocket up, those cameras ran the whole time. The whole flight, no battery issues, and it landed in the grass. And until I even got there and recovered it and allowed me to carry the rocket back, it still recorded the whole flight and then some. Um, so I find the Mobius action cam seemed to be the best. Now, on this rocket, I'm going to use a smaller version, the Mobius Mini. Um, and I can shoot at 120 frames per second. What I usually do is I shoot the ground cameras and all other cameras at 120 frames per second HD. And it allows me to go one-third slow motion on all the cameras to give you a more real realistic-looking type launch. Um, my remove before flight tag is actually working. This is the hole for the altimeters for air pressure. So I always plug those holes with a remove before flight. So as we come up the rocket here, and uh, again, we come up to the main section. This is where our main chute will be. We're gonna use a 14 inch chute. Uh, we have a three foot drogue here. And we're also gonna have a two foot pilot uh, to help pull the deployment bag out. Uh, rocket man parachutes, I use them all the time. Um, I've never had a failure aside from a mistake I made, but using deployment bags and para, um, rocket man parachutes have been fantastic. The nose cone on this thing is pretty interesting. This is something that I designed. I'm going to give you some close up shots of this because you can't see it from the camera. But, you know, what I noticed in the, in the Sidewinder is these holes in here, they house electronics. So what I did was I made some clear holes put some clear plates on and cut up a bunch of electronics and stuck them to the back. So when you look at these, it looks very, very real. This is where the separation will come from the main chute because these fins are, are mounted in and there's internal mounts here too. I didn't want to blow the parachute out this small section. So this whole thing will come out with the main chute. These are quarter inch birch plied at our fiberglass over. To make them extra strong because the way they're mounted they're going to need a little strength when it when it hits the ground but the way i got this recovery design is that this is going to be pointing down so the majority of the brunt of the hit will come on the front of this rocket which is very strong right now okay so this piece also printed by um by my buddy alex uh 3d print here uh again voice aerospace and Inside here, which I'll show you extra pictures of, he printed me a bunch of pieces to make this look as real as possible. And this is the heat-seeking nose cone. So we have like five or six different printed pieces, painted to look like metal, got a mirror in there, and then we put a clear dome over the front to make this look really realistic. And like I said, some people saw some pictures earlier on and they're like, yeah, you're not allowed to use heat-seeking and you know, well, it's not real. But I wanted to make it as real as possible. So that's the gist of what, what we got here. Um, this rocket will weigh in at 32 and a half pounds, not counting motor. 
Uh, lost you there for a second. This rocket will weigh in at 32 and a half pounds. Uh, the motor I'm going to use is about 11 pounds. So, you know, we're talking 43, 40 pounds, 44 pounds at launch. Um, so a big L would be more than enough to push this up. Now, the one last thing I want to talk about, about this rocket is, and, you know, stability is the number one issue for me. I never had a rocket go twisty, curly, flip, ever. And I think w when you get into high power, one of the most important things is that your rocket flies straight up. Doesn't turn into the crowd, doesn't lean over, doesn't, you know, you want to make sure that you're very, very stable. So, with that said, the fins on the upper part of this Sidewinder really throws off the center pressure. It brings it up. So, in order to compensate for that, there is roughly nine pounds, eight, maybe eight pounds of buckshot in the nose cone to offset these fins that are pushing the center pressure way up. So with that and the motor loaded, I'm at one and a half roughly as far as my stability numbers, 1.5. So this thing should fly really straight. And as the motor burns out, the weight in the rear will, will lighten up and it will actually get more stable as the flight continues up. So we'll have a drogue at Apogee. And then we're going to have uh, the main at 1,000 feet and a backup at 800 just in case. And again, I'll be looking for, forward to flying this, hopefully up in uh, LDRS on Sunday. If not, I'll get this up at uh, maybe another Metro launch. Uh, Metro launch or a uh, Maryland-Delaware launch. Also, I wanted to mention, too, I got four shear pins in here. Because of the weight of that nose cone, I don't want this to come out prematurely. So there's at least four uh, shear pins here. Take care of that. Um, I wanted to tell you about the decals. All the decals I got here... Um, they all came from Sticker Shock. I've used him numerous, numerous times. He's done everything from custom work um, to basic missile work, missiles, uh, what do you call it, um, standards that he has on file already. Um, but he made me some extra decals here for this. I know they're backwards, but they look really nice. Uh, the real a, a, uh, side, uh, sorry, the real Sidewinder does not have their name on it, but. You know, hey, I had the stickers. want to make it look as nice as possible. It came out really good. Very, very strong. I'm looking forward to flying this thing. And uh, that's what I got. If you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free. Put them down there. I'll put some links in the bottom. I'm going to uh, edit this video. I'm going to add some uh, pictures as we talk and uh, show you some close-ups of what we did. That's our Sidewinder. See you on the next video. Please like and subscribe, man. I really could use it. I appreciate what you guys do for me every time. Uh, just continue the, the support, and uh, we'll see you at the next launch.